What is going on everyone? I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to talk to you yet again about the upcoming NVIDIA RTX cards, which I am predicting the game performance on these is possibly not going to meet the expectations of many of you out there. And honestly, I think that these GPUs could have done so much more if NVIDIA was not making such a big push for real-time ray tracing, which in and of itself is absolutely incredible. It looks gorgeous. NVIDIA actually just posted up a video where it's running RTX on Battlefield 5 on the Rotterdam map, which is, it, they're running it at 1080p, and the description on the video describes it as running at a smooth 60 frames per second. Although, watching this video, even though there's not a frame counter, which I really wish there was a frame counter, I mean, if you're going to post up a video like this, talking about smooth 60 frames per second, using ray tracing RTX on one of the new cards, then I think at the very least you should put a frame counter up in the top right-hand corner, one, one, any of the corners really, but just put up the shadow play counter, just put up the frame rate counter so that we could see the actual performance, uncap the frame rate, and let's see, that, see what it can do. But the fact is that this gameplay is running at 1080p, and it is not even maintaining a solid 60 frames per second. There are several times throughout this video where you can see it come down probably into like the mid 40s or low 50s. Not huge frame drops, but honestly, if you're going out and you're spending $800 or $1,200 on a new NVIDIA graphics card, how many of you out there, show of hands, is going to drop down the resolution to 1080p just to use real-time ray tracing. I think it's something that I would use as a novelty, maybe turn on, you know, just to kind of see how it looks. It's like, wow, that's really impressive. But let's see where it goes in three to five years when people can actually play it at higher resolutions and a smooth, solid 60 frames per second, which on this generation, I just really don't think is going to be a reality. I mean, we already saw some numbers on the new Tomb Raider game running at around 30, 40, 50 frames per second when using real-time ray tracing, and in a single-player game, that might be okay, but when it comes to Battlefield 5, how many people are really going to go and turn on ray tracing and play at 1080p only to have frame drops below 60 in a, in a competitive FPS mod? It's a competitive multiplayer shooter. Maybe in the single-player, like again, I said, it's going to be an impressive thing to look at, but it's really just a tech demo at this point, and I don't think that's enough reason to go out and buy one of these new graphics cards, and it could have been so much more if they had kind of maybe, if they had pushed this technology back a couple of years and waited for the drop down to 7 nanometer, where we'll probably see some much more impressive performance gains. I mean, on the new generation of GPUs, they, it's, they could have done more by dedicating just straight CUDA cores to the entire silicon, but they're not doing that. They have Tensor cores on there, they have RT cores, and that is going to take up some of the silicon space here, even though this is one of the biggest dies they've done in recent years, definitely bigger than Pascal. Um, a lot of the silicon area is being taken up by Tensor cores and RT cores, which is going to help with ray tracing. But again, that brings us back to how many people are actually going to be running these games with tr ray tracing if they're having to play at 1080p. If you're picking up an $800 or a $1,200 GPU, I sincerely doubt a significant number of those people are going to be playing at a resolution of 1080p. Most of them are probably going to be playing 1440p, 144Hz, possibly looking to take advantage of the new 4K 144Hz monitors, and also ultra-wide resolutions, which I think is a much better fit for these cards, and then just taking the ray tracing and throwing it out the window. Um, the performance on these is, honestly, we're going back to the 3 Mark Time Spy benchmark, um, that we talked about the other day. We'll go back to this graph over on Guru 3D, which shows the RTX 2080 falling slightly behind the Titan XP and just a little bit above the GTX 1080 Ti. But, as I mentioned in that video, this RTX 2080 was overclocked. This thing was running over 2 gigahertz, while all the other cards in this testing scenario were run at stock speeds. I went ahead and ran the Time Spy benchmark myself with my overclocked GTX 1080 Ti, which regularly runs around 2000 to 2050 megahertz, pretty close to what the RTX 2080 was doing in their run, and my graphics score was 10,378. So if we go back to that, you would see that my 1080 Ti is doing, is going faster than the RTX 2080. So that's an overclocked 1080 Ti against an overclocked RTX 2080, and I am beating it by a few hundred points when it comes to graphics score, and I personally would have liked to seen the score on this card be a fair bit higher, going from the 1080 Ti to the 2080. Um, no doubt the 2080 Ti will probably get a few hundred, uh, probably a couple, a couple two to three thousand points higher than what we're seeing on the 2080, and you know that's 
going to be pretty decent, but the RTX 2080 is probably not going to be a smart upgrade for anyone coming from a 1080 Ti because I'm predicting that when these cards launch, that the 1080 Ti will beat the RTX 2080, which is not that impressive to me because as I mentioned in that video the other day, um, when it came to the 980 Ti's, they were competing with the likes of the 1070, which regularly gets around 6,000 graphics score, and we can see the 1070 here getting 5,700, and then obviously if you overclock, it's going to go up from there, but now we're seeing the 80 series competing with the previous Ti and actually even getting beaten by it, um, which compared to other generations, it just wasn't doing. And NVIDIA has also been very hesitant about showing actual game performance. So far, they've only produced one graph with performance that doesn't show any actual FPS numbers. It's just a scale compared to the previous generation with ray tracing performance and not normal games where people, which most people are going to be playing and probably even turning off ray tracing in the titles that do support it. And that brings us back again to Battlefield 5 and the Rotterdam gameplay, where it's running 1080p, probably around 60 FPS, but definitely some drops. And that's even on the 2080 Ti. That's the $1,200 card. So you can imagine that the $800 2080 is going to be even significantly slower than that when it comes to ray tracing. So if you're even wanting to get your foot in the door of running ray tracing right now, you're looking at an entry fee of $1,200 just to get basic 1080p 60 FPS performance, which still, again, I have to say that um, it's, it's impressive because we're actually able to do it because real-time ray tracing is incredibly intensive. So I don't want to take anything away from NVIDIA from their accomplishments in being able to do the real-time ray tracing, even at this performance for $1,200. It's very impressive. That's I'm not trying to say that it's not, but what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't make sense for most people that, are, have, the, that have $1,200 to buy one of these cards. It does not make sense to buy one of them to play games at 1080p just so that you can use ray tracing. Most people that are picking these up are going to want to do 1440, 4K, ultra-wide, I know that's what I would want to do personally. I want to hear your thoughts, though, down in the comments below. So please let me know what you think. As always, if you're going to be picking up a card, if you already pre-ordered, are you planning to run ray tracing at 1080p? Are you planning on turning it off and just using the card for what it could be? And at the end of the day, I think we're probably looking at maybe a 20% performance increase over the current TI to the new TI. But we're seeing almost a 40% price increase um, to the previous generation because the new TI is basically the new Titan X, the new Titan. Um, that's kind of just the way NVIDIA is doing it this time. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Don't forget to leave a like on that video down below if you enjoyed it. And I will see you all tomorrow for another video. Ta-ra.